Hello everyone, my name's Robert Pratton and uh, I thought I'd answer your questions by going on, um, we're taking you on a journey to work, so I'm starting at home. Uh, I don't live in a castle, but I live quite close to uh, here, this is Tower Hill in London. And um, I thought I'd better start with a definition of transmedia storytelling. So transmedia is telling a story across multiple platforms and it can take different different sort of uh, versions, different strains of transmedia storytelling. So one um, one type is the sort of franchise type, which um, you know Star Wars is a good um, example of that, where you've got a story that's told over many different types of uh, media, from films to books to games and such like. But another type is the participatory storytelling, and this is closer to the work that that we do at my company in, uh, in Conductor. So a good example of this would be the work that we did for uh, Kodansha. So Kodansha is a, uh, probably the biggest uh, manga publisher in the world and we worked on a property of theirs called Attack on Titan. And uh, Attack on Titan started as a manga comic. It's kind of like a medieval uh, walled city uh, where the villagers live inside and outside are these massive giants who eat people and uh, they're, they're the titans. So this has gone from uh, manga comic to uh, anime and then we for the uh, anime expo in uh, LA we created um, basically a location based game in which you could attack titans around the uh, little Tokyo area so uh, using uh, GPS on your phone it would identify where the, where the uh, titans were and then um, you could use like a swipe in motion to kill them off so I think it's important to um, put into context the, uh, the rest of the uh, answers I give to your questions because this the participatory transmedia storytelling that is um, the type I practice and the, and, the, and the one that I find most interesting. So my interest in um, transmedia storytelling started after I read um, uh, Henry Jenkins book Convergence Culture and at the time I'd been a, a filmmaker, I'd made two feature films and the internet was really coming into its sort of, um, you know, really reaching full speed. And lots of content was being copied uh, without permission. And, you know, lots of people in the industry at that time were saying that, you know, content is basically going to become free. So where are content creators going to make a living? And uh, I was of the opinion that experiences would be the thing that people were willing to pay for. And I've chosen to talk about this question here because I'm outside medieval uh, banquet, and it's a shame they don't have their um, they don't have their knights outside. But this is kind of one of these sort of uh, paid experiences now, where you go inside and people, um, you know, serve you as the serving wench. I, you know, medieval times is the American uh, equivalent, I guess. But this one's in a basement uh, at St Catherine's Dock, so you don't get. Um, you know, horse riding jousts and stuff like that, but it's an experience that people pay for. And um, another example uh, that we have in London is um, Secret Cinema. So they also do really immersive experiences around particular movies. Um, Star Wars was a good one that they did, and uh, they've got a Blade Runner experience coming up. And this is what this is what got me interested in uh, transmedia storytelling. So initially, a kind of um, commercial interest, like how was I going to survive as a storyteller? But then um, it rekindled my interest in games, uh, actually, you know. And so I'd been a game player in the 90s, but um, obviously we don't have the graphics capability and such like that that we do now. And uh, so I found myself going deeper into the uh, interactive. Uh, side of um, storytelling and transmedia storytelling and not so much the French uh, franchise. So I'm up on Cable Street to answer the, uh, the next question about um, you know what should you be doing if you're on a film program to get into transmedia storytelling. And, um, I came here because I wanted to talk about environmental storytelling because I think as um, film students, a good segue into transmedia storytelling is by playing games like uh, Inside from Play Dead or um, you know What's Up with Judith, Judith Finch because these are this is like storytelling with um, you know using the environment to actually convey a lot of meaning that's not delivered in words. And so I'm in this spot, and yeah, over here, 
you know, people have sort of like, you know, added this sort of graffiti and such like, and you're in a location and you're wondering what is this telling me about the past and maybe what's, you know, what sort of um, foreshadowing is here that's going to tell me about the future. So I think this type of um, storytelling that you find in those games is very good uh, for filmmakers that want to get into transmedia storytelling. So I've, I've stepped... <laughs> So I've stepped away from uh, Cable Street. I'm still heading north towards Allgate. And um, you can see here where the roads change from the older sort of pass to the new sort of gentrification of the area. Just checking I don't get run over. Um, and another game that I was actually reminded of is uh, Near Automata. Now, at the moment, it's only available on the PS4. But it's a fantastic um, game anyway. But it's also a really good example of how of the principles of transmedia storytelling because there are two characters in the game a boy and a, and a girl and when you first play through the game you play as the girl and then if you get to the end you get an opportunity to play again but this time you play as the boy and you see different episodes from a completely different perspective of that of that other character and the way that the the whole thing the storytelling in this game is phenomenal it's really really good and it just came out um, in 2017 so that's a good one to look out so um you know, to answer the next question, what's the uh, future of the sort of movie-going experience? I'm here in the sort of recently gentrified uh, um, East End, uh, at least part of sort of Allgate. And uh, what's in front of me, apart from a load of builders, is um, the Curzon Cinema. So the Curzon Cinema, you can see that it's buried in amongst this residential uh, area. And what's particularly nice about it is that it's a chain, so it's not it's not like a, just a small family-run thing, but it's not like a massive chain like, uh, you know, Universal. You won't be able to see it, but in the background there, there's actually a champagne vending machine. So this is a kind of um, local community cinema, but uh, one that's, you know... Um, been built really for a much more uh, well-heeled establishment. It predominantly uh, screens art house films, but it does the blockbusters as well. And um, it also has an online channel. So um, membership to the cinema allows you access to the films that you can watch at home as well. So it's quite, um, quite an interesting model. Um, and it shows you that even though we've got virtual reality and games at home and so on, that people still do come to the to the cinema and uh, I mean my wife and I I think it's fair to say we only watch films in the cinema these days and that's not being a snob but it's just that when I'm in front of the telly I will play a game or we might watch um, you know something on Netflix but we don't we tend not to watch movies at home and it would be in that cinema that we watch them. Yes, yeah, so one of the questions was, what's the relationship between immersive storytelling and, um, or immersive entertainment and transmedia storytelling? Well, that's a little bit like asking, what's the relationship between a movie and uh, the script? Because immersive entertainment is really the thing that we're trying to achieve. That's the platform. And transmedia storytelling is the engine that drives that forward, is the way that we achieve this sort of... Uh, sort of 360 experience, if you want to call it, if call it that, if that's what you mean by immersive entertainment. I think it's very important to remember, or to have in mind, what do we mean by immersion? Immersion comes from emotion, and that's why you can be immersed in uh, a book or in an art, uh, you know, a work of art without it being interactive, without it being all around us. So um, it's very important to remember that. I think what's good about uh, transmedia storytelling, I'm just above, just above the railway line that I'm gonna board to get into, uh, get into work. So uh, there's something to remember about transmedia storytelling is, in addition to the emotional engagement, what we can do is we're trying to manipulate people's perception. So perception, um, is the way that we interpret reality. So perception is reality, the marketing people will tell you. And what we can do with transmedia storytelling is manipulate the environment around someone so that we build a story world around someone's everyday life so that on their journey to work, they can um, imagine that they're in a different place, that certain fictional worlds that they care about are in amongst them. And... Um, it doesn't mean that you need um, 
you know, very expensive virtual reality environments to do that because the mind can't, um, can't live with random pieces of information. So we make sense of the world through stories and what we can do with platforms like Conductor is manipulate the environment and in order to manipulate someone's perception and that has them believe that a fictional story world does actually exist. Now that on its own doesn't bring immersion because if immersion equals emotion that doesn't necessarily mean that we get an emotional response from that but that's certainly our goal. So our uh, transmedia producers looking for content creators? Uh, the answer is yes, because a transmedia producer is much like a movie producer. They're the people that bring everything together. They're the ones that uh, bring the teams together to make this sort of cross-platform uh, bonanza happen. So, you know, how do you get into that? I think it's uh, most important that you're visible, that you do networking, uh, because you know, every industry is a people industry and people get opportunities, not, not necessarily because they're the best, but because they have a good relationship with someone. So building relationships with other people is the best thing that you could possibly, um, possibly do, as well as obviously honing your skill. But, um, and the way that you sort of build your network is by putting your content out there. Um, on social media, for example, or attending different events where you can meet people that can help your career. And um, one of the things that um, we look for, and I look for particularly, is people with experience who understand the differences between transmedia storytelling and interactive, participatory transmedia storytelling and just playing a movie. And it's quite... Um, I mean, an analogy I can give is kind of stage actors who go to screen. Their performance is like way too big. It's way too over the top. Or, you know, particularly in the UK, I think like many TV actors. Oh my God, you know, they're not the sort of people that I would have in a movie because they're, you know, their, their acting is just like so, so big. And um, you know, you could say the same about novelists who want to become screenwriters. Quite often they will overwrite or they don't show enough because they, they're used to an internal uh, sort of dialogue with the, uh, with the uh, characters. And so this would be the same type of thing that we experience when um, we've got content producers who are unfamiliar with uh, interactivity and the fact that, you know, in movies you would say, uh, you know, show, don't tell. But in uh, the participatory transmedia story, and we do, it would be do, don't tell. And so it's all about um, player decisions. It's getting players um, to do things. It's not about getting them to sit still and watch a video. And so this sort of understanding about getting in with a video, telling the you know, the story of whatever it needs to be, and then getting out as quickly as possible is really one of the sort of the key understandings that you could bring to an assignment. Okay, so what are the, uh, this, um, this question about what are the risks and uh, sort of returns of, of doing uh, transmedia storytelling. I think transmedia storytellers have the same uh, nemesis that uh, any movie uh, maker has, and that's self-indulgence, which <laughs> I'm worried I'm going to be uh, liable for with this video. And that is like, um, when you make a transmedia story, you really have to piggyback on existing behaviours. Don't try to uh, get the audience to do things that they're unfamiliar with, because then you're just creating a barrier, you're creating a hurdle for yourself to climb. And um, I guess in the movie world, this is the difference between some art house movies and a mainstream sort of blockbusters. The blockbusters go to a tried and tested formula, and that's why they appeal to many people. And the art house movies, you know, you would expect would take more risks. And um, and that's why they're less popular, not because they're not worthy, but because people are unfamiliar with them, because they don't know what they're going to get, whether they're going to really like it or not. Um, and so when you build your transmedia story, try to think of you know, where this story will play out and what it is that people are familiar with. And that means you need a much better understanding of your audience that you might, uh, than you might need if you were only making a, only making a movie. So um, that's, I think that's the biggest risk. I mean, the rewards with a movie, 
often uh, the best, the most satisfying experience you can get is watching your movie with an audience and seeing them react to it. But that's very location bound. You can only be in one place at one time when that movie screens. And if you're successful enough to have a nationwide release, it's very difficult to be in every cinema at the same time. One of the great things about participatory transmedia storytelling is you can see people react online. And that feeling of, of seeing people interact, of seeing them maybe communicate with characters that you've created, that is a real buzz. And I think that is something that uh, is well worth you know, seeking out. Okay, I'm at the, <laughs> I'm at the DLR now, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna get my ticket, board the train, and then when I get off at the other end, when I get off at the other end, I will uh, answer the final question about open worlds. So we're now at uh, Canary Wharf. This is the heart of the, uh, the new financial district and a good place to finish our story. <laughs> and look at this. So uh, classic example of transmedia storytelling because um, so Netflix is um, uh, Altered Carbon comes out uh, tonight, actually. It's February the 2nd. And um, here they've mocked up something that purports to project me into that into that world it's asking me to sign up for a new sleeve I mean I read the book a long time ago um, but it's a shame it's not darker because the projections not coming out quite well but um, while it's advertising the series it's actually an in-world advertisement it's advertising uh, immortality you know it's saying the best investment you'll ever make I don't know if that's going to come out on the video so that's pretty uh, it's pretty cool and it's only when I step right back that I see the Netflix uh, branded. I guess you've got altered carbon above, but um, you know, for the most part, it's trying to be in world, and yet it's in the everyday. So this is a fantastic way to uh, illustrate, you know, well, a fantastic illustration today of uh, transmedia storytelling. So that was very opportune. I didn't know that was going to. So be I wanted to finish the uh, the video here because I'm in the the kind of new East End, the gleaming spires of. Uh, of Canary Wharf and talk about open world storytelling and uh, you know what opportunities do we have for augmented reality and uh, virtual reality and such like. I kind of feel like um, I like VR films but uh, my favourites have been the documentaries uh, and it's because it's the stuff that you see outside of where somebody's talking into the camera and that's kind of what inspired me to give it a go to so we call this video uh, using using 360. I think when you look at narrative uh, 360 movies, they tend to they tend to be a little bit like the 3D movies in that when when the storytelling's working, you don't notice the technology, and so therefore there's no point in having it. So I've not I'm not a fan of 3D movies, and I like VR movies, but I tend to like the documentaries. Um, where I'm not, I'm not usually a big fan of documentaries on a on a flat screen, but um, I think one of my uh, one of my bugbears about um, about VR games is they're not very compelling. I think they rely on the spectacle of being sort of in the virtual reality space, but the actual gameplay is not fantastic. Now, having said that. One of my favourite games is the uh, Star Trek Bridge Crew, which is on the uh, sort of um, the PS PS4. And what I like about that is that you do really feel like you're on the bridge, even though um, even though it's kind of a bit quirky and fairly a bit basic. But you do kind of feel like you're on the bridge, and it's great interacting with four other sort of live 
people. And um, so that really does feel like a, you know, an engaging, emotional, immersive ex experience. I, you know, I think I've made my points before about immersion equaling uh, emotion. And um, I think that's the best that you can get from an open story world. So it's not just about being in a big place with places to roam, because it's good to have agency, that's what, that's what the games uh, designer would call it, when um, you're free to do whatever you want. So it's good to have the agency, but that on its own doesn't bring, um, doesn't bring engagement, it doesn't bring the uh, immersion. I mean, my favorite games, open world games, are like Fallout 4, for example, because it's the characters that you meet on that journey and uh, it's the places that you discover so it's much you know it's, it's bringing us back more to that um, uh, that environmental storytelling which becomes a key part of the open story world and you see here I mean this whole uh, movie has been like a movie I mean <laughs> this video that I've put together has been like a kind of uh, a journey for us. We started in one side, we've gone through different, you know, you've, you've gone through, it's like being in a game. I've kind of gone to different levels in the game in order to achieve a goal, which is getting to work. Um, and while at the same time, completing the side quest of <laughs> answering your questions. I hope that, um, I don't work in, the, in this jungle, but it felt like a good place to, um, good place to finish off. Uh, so um, I hope it's been entertaining, I hope that uh, it's been inspiring and uh, I wish you all the best with your transmedia work. This is Robert Pratton, signing out.